Now students, it's a very simple explanation of the poem The Rhyme of Ancient Mariner who was written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Uh, let's start with the first stanza. The poem is basically about sin and redemption, a redemption that the ancient mariner had killed an albatross. So let's start with the first stanza. It's an ancient mariner and he stopped one of the three by the long grey beard and glittering eye. Now wherefore stops thou me? The first stanza starts with the ancient mariner who stops one of three by the long grey beard and glittering eyes means his beard and glittering eye stop the one of the three and the guest asked why you are stopping me in the second stanza the bridegroom's doors are opened wide and I'm next of kin. The guests are met. The feast is set. Mays hear that married din. So the guest says that the bridegroom's door are open wide. Can't you see? The bridegroom's doors are open. And I'm next of kin. I'm just to reach there. The, the guests must be reached there. The guests are met. The feast is set. It means that the the dinner must be ready mazed hear the married din can can't you hear the merriment okay so the third stanza goes with he holds him with his skinny hand there was a ship got he hold off and hand me grey beard loon as soon as his hand dropped he but mariner holds his hands with skinny and said, There was a ship. The wedding guest gets irritated and said, Leave my hand, you stupid man. Now, mariner leaves his hands but holds the guest with his glittering eyes that hypnotized the guest and made him stood still. Okay, he holds him with his skinny hand. There was a ship got he hold off unhand me grey beard loon. Hold off unhand me, hold off, leave me. Grey beard loon, as soon as his hand dropped he. He says him a mad person, a grey beard loon. Because uh, he was, it, it, it shows that he was old, grey beard. Means it is old person. As soon as his hand dropped, he suddenly he drops his hand, but he holds him with his glittering eye. The wedding guest stood still and listens like a three year child. The mariner had his will, the will that he wanted to tell him the story. The wedding guest sat on a stone he cannot choose but hear, and thus spake on the ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. Now, the wedding guest was having no other choice or just to listen to the story, and he sat on a stone and thus spake on the, that ancient man, the bright-eyed mariner. And now the mariner starts narrating his story. The ship was cheered, the harbour cleared, merrily did we drop, below the kirk, below the hill, below the lighthouse top. Okay, so he narrates the story like one clear and bright day, he set out on a ship full of sailors, they all were in a happy mood. Sun was shining brightly, the church, they moved along the church. The hill, they moved towards the lighthouse top. All these things came into their way. Okay, the sun came up upon the left. Out of the sea came he, 
and he shone bright and on the right went down into the sea. The bright sun was shining and they assumed like it came out of the sea towards their left side and went down on the right side. Higher and higher every day till over the mast at noon the wedding guest here beat his breast for he heard the loud bassoon. So when they were travelling towards equator, they were sailing along the equator, they saw that the sun rose higher and higher every day. Suddenly, the sounds of the wedding bassoon interrupts the wedding guest. He beats his chest just as he wanted to, he wanted to go to the marriage ceremony. The bride had paced into the hall, red as rose as she, nodding their heads before her goes the merry minstrels. The bride had paced into the hall, means the bride must have entered the reception hall and the music plays. She looks as red as rose due to blushing cheeks. The wedding guest, he beat his breast. Yet he cannot choose but hear, and thus speak on the ancient man, the bright-eyed marina. But still the wedding guest has no other choice, although he beat his breast as he wanted to go to the marriage, but he has no other choice but to ch listen to the story. And now again the ancient marina starts narrating his story. And now the storm blast came, and he was tyrannous and strong. He struck with his overtaking wings and chased us south along. Suddenly, when they were going towards equator, a storm blast came. It means they faced a terrible storm that was so dominating, so tyrannous and strong. He struck with his overtaking wings and chased us south along. We can see that the, the storm was as terrible, as cruel, as, as strong that it overtake the wings of the ship and it chased them towards the south. With sloping mast and dipping pro as who pursues with yell and blow, still treats the shadow of his foe and for what bans his head the ship drove fast loud roared the blast and southward a flayed marina says that they went towards equator they, fa they faced a storm that was very cruel and strong and it was so hard that they moved f towards south the storm was chasing the ship like a strong enemy. It was like a hunter chasing its prey. Due to storm, the ship drove fast and they moved towards the south. And now there came both mist and snow, and it grew wondrous cold, and ice mast high came floating by as green as emerald. So the mariner says that they came to a place where they can see mist and snow. It means it looks like they, they came towards the south of the globe. And now they reached at a place where they were all covered with snow and icebergs. The icebergs that were floating and the, it was as green as emerald. Simile is used here as green as emerald. The eyes, the, the icebergs were very green, very sh shining green and it was as high as their mast. They were very high and <coughs> the ship was surrounded by the floating ice. They stuck in the steep sides of the ice world. There was no place to move the ship. There was no life all around the next stanza that day. As through the drift the snowy glaze did sand a dismal scene, no shapes of man 
no bits we can the eyes was all between <coughs> when they came towards the south they were all covered with snow and they haven't seen a single person as there was no one there was it was looking like there is no life as it's a very eyes all around the eyes was here the eyes was there the eyes was all around it cracked and growled and roared and howled like noises in a swamp so they reached at a place where there is all eyes there's only eyes towards all around the eyes cracked growled and howled and it held the ship at one place so they were stuck to the same place just because of the snow cover finally at length did cross an albatross through the fog it came as it had been a christian soul we hailed it in god's name finally an albatross came from the land of mist and snow and they considered it as a sign of good luck as it gave an indication of life around them they hailed it in the name of christ and considered it to be a bird of good luck it ate the food it never had it and round and round it flew the eyes did split with the thunder of it the helmsman steered us through albatross ate the food that it may have never had before it flew around the ship now the eyes splits with the thunder and the sailors starts moving the ship as they got a space to steer their wings and a good south wind sprung up behind the albatross did follow and every day for food or play came to the mariners hollow now when they start moving it seems like good south wind sprung up behind them the albatross is also following to them and every day for food and play she came to the ship Now a good south wind starts blowing the albatross follows the ship every day when mariner call it for food and play with them in mister cloud on master shroud it pours for was pours nine while all the night through fog smoke white glimmer the white moon shine albatross flew in mist or cloud it used to sit on mast or sometimes on the sail sometimes it sat on the eaves of the ship and played there on a fixed time every day god save the ancient mariner from the fines that plague the dust may god save you the ancient mariner from all the troubles mariner replied Why looks thou so with my crossbow I shot the albatross don't look me like this I kill the albatross with my crossbow oh